Gregory says, hey, Bradley, a few weeks ago, he answered a question about how to manipulate the autocomplete drop down options to include the brand name of a specific local business in that niche. And you mentioned that you used used to use the query string from that local niche search and run Google display ads with that link. I got to wondering about how to make that effective since, uh, if I understand correctly, display ads are not typically shown to active searchers in the search engine results, but to targeted browsers at non-search times. So how would you entice them to click on your ad when they aren't looking for that local product on the service at that time? Because it's uh, because of the way that you can set up the ads. And I just did training on this in the mastermind like two days ago for how to do this with YouTube, uh, not manipulate, um, suggest, but you could apply the YouTube ads training that I added to the mastermind um, this week uh, to this. You could, you could use it for that. All you do is you set the, the target URL for when somebody clicks on the YouTube ad to go to that search query string. And it, it, it performs the same thing. And by the way, that kind of a link click guys is huge. You understand a link click from a YouTube ad is a great click. It's a very heavy weighted click because first they have to see the ad and then they have to click. So in order, it's not like a display ad. I'll get back to your question in a minute, but a display ad, remember, the display ad, all they have to do is click and it automatically takes them to the destination. So it's a one action action. It's a one action action. I don't know if that, that makes sense. Uh, but with a YouTube video, they have to view it first and then click. So it's a two action process, right? So that click is very heavy weighted. And I just demonstrated today, I added in the, the YouTube ads training that I added to our mastermind. I just added an update video today because I, I set up the campaign three days ago. And that was the initial video that I posted in the group. And then today I went in, I said I was going to let it run for five to seven days and then come back and, and provide an update. I let it run for three days and uh, I already, for on a $2 a day budget, and I got uh, YouTube ad and I got two clicks at $3 per click because it's three days it's been running at $2 a day. So I spent six bucks and I had two clicks and it was, so the average cost per click was like $3 and one cent or whatever. And I was demonstrating in the video that I recorded today in the update video, I was like, listen, if I were to pay, don't, don't, I'll get back to your question in a minute, but th that was a YouTube ad that I set up, what I call a branding campaign or an indirect lead generation campaign for um, local. And so it's a tree service YouTube video that I set up as the ad and I've defined my geographic targeting um, to a very specific area, the county that the city, that the Google business profile is located in, the, the, the business is located in. Um, so I set the geographic targeting and then I set the um, audience targeting or the targeting period, right? The geographic targeting and then the the, the, the um, ad targeting I set up for, I use in-market audience. There's a in-market audience, home and garden services or home and garden, home and garden services. Uh, and then there's lawn and landscape maintenance. So that means they're in market for lawn and landscape maintenance services. And I set that up as one of the targeting types. So that was in its own ad group. And then I set up a custom segment and another ad group, which is just search query based. Anyway, long story short, I let it run for three days. And then I went into anal to review it today. And I got two clicks at $3 and one cent, or maybe it was 10 cents, whatever, $3 per click, two clicks. If I were to set up the same YouTube, or excuse me, Google search ads campaign in the same geographic area, uh, and got clicks from Google search ads, yes, it's likely to be a higher conversion rate um, because people are, you know, are going to Google and searching for tree service. That's a very intentional search. Uh, but I would have spent anywhere between $35 to $60 per click. So anywhere between 10 to 20 times what I paid for the YouTube ad click. So I, because I defined a very specific audience. So you understand what I'm saying about that is that the, uh, you can use YouTube ads to do that. You can use from what I understand, Facebook ads, I don't do Facebook ads, but uh, the way that I describe doing CTR with Google ads, you can use YouTube, but that's more about the views than the clicks. But as I mentioned, a, a click from a YouTube ad is a very heavy weighted click because it requires two actions before, in order for, the, to, to, for them to visit the target URL, right? With a, with, to a display ad, to get back to your question, sorry, <laughs> uh, the display ads is, again, you define your audience, there's a, m a number of things that you can do for targeting, but the way that I do it is the same way I do it with YouTube ads. I define my geographic area so that my ad is only impressions are only going to be given to people that are in that physical area that I've defined. And then number two, that are in market, right? Or using one of the, the predefined audience segments in Google. I like to use in market segments. 
or there's life event segments, or you can create your own custom segment through intent or search queries. There's a number of things that you can do. So to get back to your question, it's if somebody was potentially in the market, according to Google, for lawn and landscaping services or lawn and landscape maintenance services or landscape and lawn maintenance or whatever the hell the in-market audience is, and uh, they're in a particular county that I've defined, and then they start seeing display ads that are talking about lawn and garden or lawn and landscape maintenance services. So tree services, tree pruning, tree removal, you know, that kind of stuff. Then if it's interesting to them, they're going to click it, right? So you're, you're asking, Gregory, what do you do to get them to click? Well, you define that in your ad settings, right? You want to have a relevant audience specifically because that's a heavier way to click. You can do just regular kind of like very, very broad targeting. and But what's the point of that when you can just buy, use a CTR app, if that makes sense, that has no history? Why I talk about using Google Ads for CTR and also you can use it for uh, suggest manipulation as your original question asked um, is because you're buying traffic, validated traffic from Google, from known Google users that Google has already determined are likely interested in the products or services that you're promoting. So that's why I suggest that because it is a much heavier weighted click. Google gives that click more credit or weight than it does some random bot click. Again, uh, so it, it's it's more valuable for CTR. So my 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 assumption is it would also be more valuable when trying to suggest or excuse me manipulate search suggest. Is that clear? Um, so anyway, display ads are not typically shown to active searchers in the search engine results. That's correct because display ads aren't displayed in the search engine results, at least not in Google. Some of the other search results will have display ads embedded into those too, but Google doesn't. Uh, so how would you entice them to click on your ad? Again, choose a relevant audience because then they're already predisposed, according to Google, to be in likely to click on that ad. Does that make sense? Um, you can also do placements, by the way. Like that's something else. You can you can find uh, you know local uh, websites, blogs, newspapers, things like that. It's pull all the links out from those those sources and put them into a custom segment. And now anybody that's visited any of those local websites, uh, you know, here's an example. If a tree, if I'm, if I'm targeting people that are interested or likely interested in lawn and landscape maintenance services, which would include tree services. And uh, couldn't I also create a custom segment where I say, okay, uh, I want anybody that is in this County, whatever County, let's say the example that I used in the training that I produced earlier this week was Loudoun County, Virginia. So let's say I can tell Google that I want Google to start creating, filling a bucket of Google users that are within Loudoun County that have recently visited Lowe's, Ace Hardware, Home Depot, nurseries. I don't mean for babies. I mean like landscaping nurseries, right? Um, have visited uh, Home and Garden TV, have been reading blogs or visiting websites that are about home and garden services and home home maintenance and landscaping and, you know, things like that. The point is I can create an audience. A I can tell Google, fill this bucket full of people that have done these things, have searched for these things, have visited these websites, have visited these physical locations. I can define all that. And Google starts to populate a bucket full of those Google users that meet that criteria. And then my ads start serving to them. Right. So when they click that ad, it's not only like more likely to convert, it's a much heavier way to click by Go in, in Google's eyes, because, again, it's a relevant audience. You're serving them relevant information. So uh, it works, guys. It works really well. And that's what, um, like I said, I'm trying to get better incorporating all of that, including search ads, because I think it's more important and more necessary now than it, it really ever has been, in my opinion. So anyway, hopefully that's clear. Um, cost per click is very, very inexpensive. Uh, you know, I've run ads for display ads. I've got, I swear to God, I've got campaigns running out there at 50 cents per day just for CTR. So that's $15 a month for CTR, but it works. And by the way, you can set up a campaign where you have the same ad or the same ad set, which is in Google creates the ads. Now you just put multiple images in and in multiple, uh, texts and things like that. And Google starts creating its own ads out of those assets and it will auto optimize over time. 
over it determines what gets the higher click through rate. We'll start showing that more often, et cetera. So it's super easy to set up ads now and Google will auto optimize the ads, but you can take the same ad set and have three different target URLs, right? You can have a link to your money site, link to, uh, in your case, you were talking about suggest, so the search query string, but you can also modify that query string to include different keywords and things like that. But you can take that same ad set and have that same ad set up in, in an ad group three times with a different destination or target URL for each ad click. One for the money site, one to the Google business profile, the map, one to the Google business website. So now when you're getting clicks, you're sending, again, CTR signals from validated Google user traffic to various local entity assets. So you, what you're doing is you're buying traffic from Google, you're buying engagement signals, CTR from Google, right? Very effective. I would encourage you to do it.